beauty brand that invented the subscription box models, ready to make a comeback after a tough 2016. Allison Morris sat down with Birchbox's CEO to hear their survival story. And really, it seems like everything's on subscription these days. It really is. And these were the guys who really said, like, here, let's try this. And everybody else jumped yeah. on the idea. 2016 really was a tough year for Birchbox. Major job cuts, changes in marketing and manufacturing, even a revamp of their loyalty program and their business priorities. Oftentimes, when we hear about those kinds of shifts at a brand, it can mean they're in really big trouble. But Birchbox has started 2017 with a bang, nearly seven years after they kicked off an obsession in our country with subscription boxes. There was this huge conversation happening around consumer products and disruptive innovation, and nobody was talking about it for beauty. That was back in 2009 when Katya Beecham and her Harvard Business School classmate Haley Barna came up with the idea for Birchbox, a subscription box service that sends monthly beauty samples. Our idea was really simple. We said we are going to basically take everything that's out there for beauty, we're going to curate it, we're going to personalize it, and then we're going to figure out how to get you to buy it online. They launched in September of 2010, just a few months after graduating, jump-starting their own business and igniting a subscription box frenzy. Perfect for your busy life. Seven months into Birchbox, we had huge copycats. Um, globally, people had raised tens of millions of dollars against the idea we had raised one. The brand took off, eventually attracting over a million subscribers, raising more than $70 million, valued at nearly half a billion. We hit our five-year target in revenue in seven months. They launched Men's Birch Box in 2012 and opened their New York City flagship in Soho in 2014, rethinking the way that beauty stores are organized. Our store is merchandised by category and it's multi-brand. So you'll be just looking at all of the eye products together. You'll look at all the serums together. And then 2016 hit. The market definitely shifted in terms of favorability, interest in e-commerce, retail in general, less capital out there, and we just knew that we needed to be prepared to be going it alone. They cut staff, cut back on marketing, and changed their loyalty program to reward customers for actual purchases. The most, the most value came from operational savings, frankly, okay. though. That's where we really focused on um, automation of our box manufacturing, so fewer human touches, more machine touches, so that we could produce more personalized boxes, like more variation mm -hmm. without increasing the cost of doing that. Critics thought it was the beginning of the end, but Katya says it was just the beginning. This year has been unreal. Um, so we ended 2016 on a huge high note with the best holiday we've ever had. Awesome. So we uh, were the biggest business we'd ever been in December 2016 and then the same thing just happening. Biggest January, biggest February and so it was clear that it was a trend. The company is now profitable and they opened a brand new store in Paris in April. French consumers are more educated about skincare. And Birchbox is proving to the naysayers that the brand is not just a subscription fad. We never saw the consumer demand softening. That was not the risk at all. But you know, rumors are risky. As a brand, that was one of the things that Katya said was the most challenging about 2016. When the rumors in the industry are that you're falling apart, it can be really tough to retain and attract the talented people that you need to survive. Mm -hmm. They hung on, though, and she says they're now focusing on their next potential retail stores and, of course, looking ahead already to holiday 2017. Wow. All those yes. businesses say, you end one holiday, move on to the next. That's where yes. they make their money. Right. You're in and out so quick, too. Oh, they yes. fought back, though. It's impressive. Good for them. All right. Thank you, Allison.